Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Chainlink News. We have some very exciting news with a Circle and Chainlink partnership and also a very cool interview with Sergey. Let's dig in. Okay, first we're going to take a look at this partnership between Circle and Chainlink. Chainlink CCIP has now integrated with Circle's CCTP protocol, and this is for supporting cross-chain USDC transfers. So a little weird on terminology here, right? We have CCIP, the Chainlink cross-chain interoperability protocol, and now we have CCTP, which is Circle's cross-chain transfer protocol. So Circle is the creator of USDC, and now they are partnering to securely and reliably transfer USDC across chains. So, you know, CCIP is a protocol that is designed for many different things, um, DAP interactions, cross-chain, smart contract calls and, and, and functions across chain, um, state transitions eventually. So we don't need to get too complicated. Whereas CCTP circles is just for USDC. It's quite simple. And so we have a quote here that Sergey said, he said, we're excited to support the adoption of stable coins across a variety of use cases. I'm pleased to see that our defense in depth security infrastructure of CCIP, which has multiple layers of decentralization, is something that's highly valued by the developers building with USDC. And that CCIP's advanced risk management features will play a big role in how USDC is sent across various key user requirements. And so, um, you know, you know, we don't need to spend too much time here. Take a look, but it's, you know, CCIP continuing to do big things and work with the right people. Next, we have a interview with Sergey, and it basically goes over how will Chainlink connect blockchains and AI. Let's quickly take a look at this video. Networks are the interface between everything on chains and everything outside of chains and between chains. So the role that Oracle Networks already plays by feeding the largest amount of cryptographically verified data into chains, providing various computations to chains that they can't do themselves, and now also connecting various chains, both in the public chain world and in the private chain, bank chain, capital markets world. So this interface is, is quite important because the reliability and the security and the deterministically guaranteed nature of chains need to be maintained. And that needs to be maintained whatever technology they interact with, even if they interact between two chains. So the interaction between AI and blockchains, I think, will basically have to happen through some kind of verifiable, secure, decentralized interface, which is really what Oracle networks provide and have successfully provided within uh, the Chainlink framework for the longest time that they've been around because the Chainlink framework originated decentralized Oracle networks. And the fact that there has been 8.5 trillion in transaction value processed by those systems and that you know, the largest amount of cryptographic truth has been generated out the chains, and that now we're successfully connecting some of the most secure chains some, from some of the most security sensitive bank and capital markets users with Oracle Networks as that uh, mechanism basically shows that Oracle Networks are the right interface to connect both everything in the external world and everything between multiple chains. And AI is one of those things. And AI will, will want to take information from chains as a reliable source of truth that they might even be forced to use in order to, to function in a way that's predictable. And they will um, want to be used as computational services by smart contracts and chains because smart contracts and chains will be the mechanism through which all the world's value is secured, transacted, and managed. And so you're, what you're really asking about when you ask about the intersection of blockchain and AI is how will... The, the future computing technologies of the world in the form of AI and the future value storage, value transfer, and value management technologies in the form of blockchains and Oracle networks and verifiable applications work together. And the answer to that is that they'll need an interface that meets the security needs of the blockchains and the verifiable applications and is advanced enough to be able to interact with AI technologies in a useful way. And that's what the, the Chainlink network is. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, we're going to move right on to how Chainlink enables high integrity tokenized gold markets. And what does that mean? So tokenized gold is just physical gold bullion that has its ownership rights stored as digital tokens on a blockchain. And so we know this huge 
big shift of asset tokenization, real world assets coming on chain and Chainlink is a massive player. Um, if you are interested in learning about how gold is tokenized on chain and how that functions with Chainlink, um, go ahead and take a look. It, it explains the difference between physical gold and tokenized gold and how that enables this new world of on-chain finance that you know brings greater accessibility, transparency, it lowers costs, it provides better liquidity, and it really unlocks innovation. So that's going to be at chain.link slash education dash hub where they have a lot of their education stuff. Go ahead and take a look at that. And now we also have an interview which was on the Smarters Securities podcast. And this was talking tokenization with Swift, Chainlink, and Euroclear. And um, these three organizations have collaborated on interoperability and tokenization initiatives. And they just discussed the technology and the potential. We're not going to play that here. It is 41 minutes, so it's probably worth listening to on your drive or while you're at the gym or something like that. But um, go ahead and enjoy that. It's good to see that Swift and Chainlink are obviously still doing big work together. And then we have Talus Protocol, which is in integrating CCIP to allow for cross-chain staking of their protocol and the reclaiming of the rewards. So um, Talus is a project that's built on top of synthetics and it's multi-chain. So it's on Arbitrum, it's on Base, and it's on Optimism. And they are now leveraging CCIP to send messages across chain and synchronize and unify the Talus staking protocol and the rewards mechanism. So, um, you know, and it's done in a chain agnostic manner. So this is just very cool. It allows users to sort of be able to stake on any of the chains, Arbitrum, Base, or Optimism, and claim rewards on any of the chains, and it creates a single unified pool. And this is obviously the power of CCIP, um, which allows for secure and reliable cross-chain messaging, among other things. And then it just goes into why they made the choice, why CCIP is right for them, etc. So Talus is, is, is very legit player. This might be worth paying attention to. This is kind of early signal of how maybe next gen DeFi protocols might design their staking and token reward infrastructure. And this is on CCIP. It's important to know that Synthetics and Chainlink have had a longstanding relationship. So this is not that surprising. Next, we have... Kunji Finance, which is a decentralized social trading project. I guess it's a decentralized social. They joined Chainlink Build. Uh, we go over Chainlink Build almost every week on this channel. I don't need to get into it. You can go ahead and check that out. But basically, another cool new startup joins Chainlink Build, will get benefits and priority support from the Chainlink ecosystem, as well as provide financial incentives back to Chainlink in return. So more teams building, that's great. Decentralized social is a big opportunity. And then we have a new game, Matrix Abyss, metagame Matrix Abyss, join Chainlink Build. So we see more and more teams are joining Chainlink Build. And you know they say, as a part of Build, we aim to accelerate growth and adoption of Web3 gaming. And they're happy to have access to all the Chainlink Oracle services and technical support. Again, there are so many startups in Web3 they need data feeds. They need a lot of these products that Chainlink provides. So they join Chainlink Build. They give Chainlink some of their token and some of their equity. And then Chainlink provides them the services and some like light consulting. So Chainlink, in addition to all the platforms that they're building, the products on their platform, they also are sort of building a, a, a portfolio of companies who are building on them and, and they get some of their equity. So pretty interesting. That's all for this week of Chainlink News. We hope you enjoyed. If you are interested in Web3 News, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel. We will see you next week.